the key here is knowing your lead generation numbers, okay? And that was an example of someone, it's an agent I've had the privilege of coaching, that really knows her lead generation numbers. You see, she knew her conversion ratios at an impressive level. It's, it's a, a level that oftentimes will make you feel guilty when you hear it because you don't necessarily know that. And that's normal if you feel that way. What I, wanna, what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit about how you should be tracking your lead generation numbers. Um, I'm gonna give you some tools to do it very easily. At the first, I wanna really stop and explain why that is. Um, a, a, a wonderfully high producing agent who I've had the privilege of knowing once told me, you don't have to like the activity. What you need to like is the result. And I think that's really true, because oftentimes what the work you have to do to get something done is not necessarily what motivates you or drives you. It's that result that you get from it is what drives you. And sometimes focusing on that result is what makes you do what you need to do. Whether that result might be enough money to send my kids to college or enough time so I can take vacations with my spouse or move closer to my family or whatever that is. Focusing on that result will oftentimes make you do the activity. But I want to kind of flip the script today a little bit. And we're going to talk about focusing on the activity, not the result. And you'll see I've got it written down right here. The key to tracking your lead generation numbers and continuing to lead generate, to continue to prospect, to continue to farm, to continue to contact your sphere or your database, the key to doing that over time is always focusing on the activity, not the result. Focusing on the process, the effort, not the outcome. Okay, because if we focus too much on the outcome, we'll go through times where the effort's not working and we'll quit. I can't tell you how many times we're gonna call FISBOs or expires and have no results for two to three weeks. Most quit. The point is you, you look at your success based upon that effort. Did I make my contacts? Yes, I did. It is a productive day. You have to trust that the results, the outcome will follow. And they do. We're not teaching anything new or novel here. We're teaching a lot of things that have been taught for decades. They have been proven to work. We don't need to test that. The stuff we're teaching works. The problem is we focus on the results, whether they're working for us, and then we quit. We have to remember it's a coin toss with lead generation. Okay. When you flip a coin, what are the odds it's going to be heads or tails? 50%. 50-50, right, 50%. Now, if I, if I bet, if Ken and I bet, and I bet it's going to be a dollar that it's going to be heads, and we flip that coin 50 times, and it's tails every single time, do I keep betting or do I not? In theory, if I keep flipping, this is, how, this is actually how they created a place called Las Vegas. In theory, <laughs> I would quit <laughs> and Las Vegas would win. However, if I continue to bet, in theory, according to the odds, I would slowly catch up and my 50% would catch up and there would, the heads would start turning up again. I didn't quit. I'm not focusing on the effort. I keep flip, or I, I'm not focusing on the result, right? I'm focusing on that activity. I could say, yeah, I'm losing, this doesn't work, heads is never going to come up. That coin is weighted wrong. I could focus on that result and just quit. But we know it's a 50-50 <coughs> chance. If I keep flipping, it works. The same is with every type of lead generation we teach in here. So, if we focus on that activity and just give ourselves a reward based on whether we accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish each day, and trust that the results will follow and flow from that. That's what creates that longevity in a career in real estate. Not getting discouraged, not saying none of that worked. I've tested it, open houses don't work. I've tested it, farming doesn't work. I, it does work, stick with it, right? So how do we stick with it? This is, the reason, this is the real reason we track our lead generation numbers. The real reason we track our lead generation numbers. There's three of them. And those three reasons are, number one, we do it for motivation. It is very hard every single day to wake up and lead generate. It's extremely challenging to make yourself do it. It's hard. Okay? 
It, it, we know we need to do it. Every one of us does. Knowledge isn't the problem. It's making ourselves do it. But if we know we need to make our 10 contacts and we write it down and we track it, and especially if we're smart enough, courageous enough, and honest enough to, a, to a hold ourselves accountable with another human being that you need to give that sheet to or show that to sheet to, now you've really done a lot of work to ensure that you are motivated to do what you know you need to do but never seem to be able to. Right? So we do it for motivation. We also do it for accountability. Ability, right? Sometimes you've got to phonetically sound it out. We do it for accountability. Same reason. I know I'm going to work each day. I've done what I've needed to do. Was it a productive day? Did I get new business? Who cares? That's focusing on the results. If I'm only focusing on the results all the time, that leads to massive stress. I don't want you to ever set goals based on results. If I say I'm going to close 100 transactions this year, that is a result-driven goal, and that's dangerous. Because you don't have total control over that. But if you were to say, I'm going to set 250 listing appointments this day, this year, now we're talking. That's an activity-based goal. Healthier. If you don't close 100 transactions, it's not your fault. You've done your work. You're going to get business from that sometime down the future. Which is why I like the idea of a daily goal that's based on an activity. That daily goal might be making 10 or 20 contacts a day. If you've done that, pat yourself on the shoulder. You've done more than what 80% of realtors uh, out there do. You've actually done something to try to get some more business. Heaven forbid, right? Okay, and the last reason we do it, and this a lot of people miss this. This is the best benefit. We do it for diagnosis. We track our numbers to diagnose where our weak spots are in real estate. Okay? So if you're a lead generator, and we're using the two forms that you have in front of you, okay? You've got those all passed out in front of you. It looks something like this on your screen, where we actually can see <coughs> listings, sellers, buyers. I've given you two forms. They really accomplish the same thing. Okay, both of them. You've got, you can pick either one. One's based on a daily format, and that's this one here. And then a weekly format, which is right here. Okay, you can go either way. They, they both accomplish the same goal. I've just given you two formats. We also have them digitally. Okay, so we'll be putting those up on our uh, online intranet by the end of the day, so you can access those as well, too. Uh, I want to go back to our daily one, though. It's a little easier to explain because it gives me a little bit more room to write. And I've actually written down a kind of a rough version of it right here so I can write on it and not have to write on this screen. You can get very flexible with this and use it anyway. This one's designed for you to be a little bit more freestyle with. But to track those numbers, it may look something like this. Let's say that we decide to write a Monday over here to the side. So you'd write Monday, possibly, right up here next to sellers. You might write Tuesday here, Wednesday here, Thursday here, and track your efforts as you move across the page. Okay? Remember, for you high C's and high S's out there, be real, real flexible with this. Okay? You can use this any way you want to use it. It's just designed for you to track the way you want to track. You can track with hash marks for every call you make. You can write down five calls. Whatever you want to do there, it works. As long as you're tracking your numbers, I'm cool with it. Okay? But you should always be tracking your numbers. So let's say the average person, let's say, let's use prospecting. Okay? Let's say someone's actually making calls or contacts because it's very easy to track that. But this works with farming flyers. I mean, I, I could tell you right now, when I used to farm back in the day, if I sent out 150 flyers a day, that usually equaled one listing for me, okay, or at least one listing appointment, or you know what that would be, that would be two contacts, so if I sent out 150 farming flyers, I knew that I would typically get two calls from people in the neighborhood, which might, one of those calls might work into a listing appointment where I went to their house. Most of the time, if I had a listing appointment, I wrote a contract, which means it was a listing, a listing agreement. Most of the time, that was about a 0.95% type of deal. But I knew my numbers and I knew my conversion ratios just like that young lady did on that, uh, on that video. I knew where my numbers were. Now, and I know there's people in this room that know it too. I do. So let's say on Tuesday though I prospect, okay? So on Tuesday, I make 25 phone calls. And I might count those with hash marks as we go. But ultimately I make 25 phone calls. This is a lead or an attempt. Then, I get contacts. Let's say I make 
15 contacts. That's a pretty good ratio. If I make 25 uh, phone calls and I get 15 contacts, I'm calling some good numbers. That's very, very strong, right? And out of those 15 contacts, I get one appointment, and that equals a listing. That ultimately might be a closing down the road. On Wednesday, let's say I make 25 phone calls again, and that gets a little bit more realistic. From there, I get eight contacts. From my eight contacts, I get zeros. Thursday, 25 again, I get 11. Let's say I get lucky that day, I pick up two, which goes one and one all the way down. Okay, so I'm tracking it. This is a way to track it by day, for example. Uh, you can track it by, you can actually split your days and do mailers and calls that day or whatever it may be. Now, you won't obviously get a closing the same day you prospect. So this closing would actually come from weeks before. Does that make sense? So we're tracking it over time like a pipeline. Now, here's where it gets squirrely, guys. Here's where we diagnose. This is where it's very important, okay? If we get to a point where we are making 25 contacts and I'm only getting 25, sorry, calls and I'm only getting two contacts, I've got a problem. Who are you calling? What time are you calling? Where are you getting your phone numbers? I can diagnose that problem. Does that make sense? I, I believe it or not, I get this from a lot of you. This is very, very common. I want to know where these problems are, but you can't tell until we see it. Then ultimately we'll fix that problem, and we'll, let's say we start getting 11 contacts, but now we're making 11 contacts and we're getting no appointments every single time. No appointments. What are you saying? Where are your scripts? What are your dialogues? Are you coming from contribution? Are you trying to close over the phone? That's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. They're trying to close too early. What ends up happening is they're making a contact, but they've got no appointments because what they're trying to do is get you right to contract too quick. What this phone call, this script should be about, it should not be about what they should list their home for. It should be only about getting the appointment. And to get an appointment, you need to give something a benefit, which means if I were to see your house, if I were to sit down with you at that point in time, I could determine what the price of your house would be. However, if you get into the subject matter of listing their house over the phone, which means, well, your neighborhood prices are this, and well, that could be a little bit high for your house, and you start actually talking about listing their house over the phone, you're giving them absolutely no reason to meet with you. You've taken away their something of benefit, and you're trying to actually list their house over the phone, which I don't know about you, I've never heard of being done before. You need to get in person to list their property. So that phone call is solely about getting the appointment and providing something of benefit to sit down with them. And that benefit that we give as realtors, other than little pretty magnets and things, and calendars, is we can give them information they don't know, which is what all their neighbors' houses are selling for and how that relates to the current value of their home, right? We can give them that compared to market analysis. So we want to bring that as value, of course. We need to see their house first so we can make sure that we're assessing it properly and sit down with them. So we need to make sure we slow down and break down these steps. If you don't track your numbers, sometimes you don't know why prospecting is not working. Same thing here. If we actually are making plenty of contact, uh, plenty of leads, we're making enough calls, which is actually typically the problem. No one's ever making any calls. If you start with zeros, you're going to get zeros all the way across. <laughs> zeros, you get 25 uh, leads, and you end up making, uh, let's say, 12 contacts, and you get two appointments, doing super. Um, However, we're getting no contracts. Now, what does our listing presentation look like? What's our script like? I can see these problems. I can diagnose those problems. If I'm one of these lead agents out here that are working with buyer's agents, I certainly want to know the conversion ratios broken down of all the people that are working on my team because I want to see where the problem is. And I can't see it unless I see the numbers. Right? And I'll tell you right now, like Apple knew, that lady on that video, she knew how many listings she needed to get to get the results she wanted. And if you focus on getting the listings, the activity, as opposed to closing the escrows, when you get on these phone calls and you get a human live body, all you're trying to do is get the appointment because she knows how many appointments it takes to get her a listing. And you will be shocked to learn what that does to your mindset on that phone call. I'm doing everything I can to get in their living room. What can I do 
to get in their living room. Because I know if I get enough living rooms, that will equal a certain amount of closed transactions. <coughs> right? Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the concept behind it. We do it for motivation. We do it for accountability. We do it for diagnosis to get better. The whole key to the whole deal, though, guys, if nothing else, is focus on the activity of lead generating. Focus on setting the appointments or making the contacts. Do not focus on the results for too long.